Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. In this video, I want to talk about Firestore. Now, if you have been following the Google blogs recently, there was a recent announcement by the Firebase team about the Firestore. Now, I have been in touch with the Google team uh, with this project, the Firestore, for quite a while now. And now, since they have officially released the beta version, I can actually officially talk about this project. Now, trust me, I have been using this project for a while now, and it's amazing. In this video, I'll be talking about what is Firestore and in case you are being aware with the Firebase, obviously the next question is what is the difference between Firestore and Firebase? And obviously the third question comes up, should I be using the Firebase or the Firestore? All of this coming up in this video. Okay, so before we start talking about the Firestore, I would like to say that I was really excited about this project and I have been using this not in a very big scale project or something, but I have created some of the to do things kind of apps in Firestore and I absolutely loved it. The way how this project has scaled up in front of my eyes is amazing and the team is remarkably hardworking. They are fixing up all these issues and everything. So I can honestly say that this project has got great potential and I was kind of a dying to talk in front of camera with you all of YouTube guys uh, for this project but I couldn't actually. But now since it's officially released, I can actually talk about all of this and I'm so excited about this. So first, let's talk about what is Firestore. So Firestore is the Google's new database. It's a NoSQL database and it's amazing. It's fast, it's more intuitive and the best part is you can now make queries with the database. Now, in case you have been aware with the Firebase, Firebase was amazing real-time database, but there were some limitations with that database. It was amazing real-time, but you can either sort or can filter in that database. But all these kind of a drawbacks which were there in the Firebase real-time database now has been overcome into the Firestore. Now, in the Firestore, you can uh, chain up your queries, sortings, and all kind of queries that you can do in the NoSQL database. Also, this new database is much more faster. It can perform all the queries and as well, it is more scalable as compared to the real-time database. Now, there are lots of advanced features in the Firestore and it is one of my favorite. The reason being it's my favorite is because of just one reason, that is ability to make queries and not just queries to fetch a lot of data to online uh, from the offline state. This is amazing thing and one of the very advanced things. Now, honestly, if you have ever worked on the Firebase, it is amazing, first of all, but the way how it stores all of your data and the way how you fetches all of the data is actually a little bit tricky because it just stores everything as a big JSON object and that's it. You have to just dig around that. You have to use it somewhat like an API and there is not much you can do. And the problem comes up when the database actually populates quite a lot and there is a lot of data. At some of that situation, you obviously want somebody uh, who can actually query to your data and fetch up only those results which you are interested in. But there was no such thing as making up these good queries uh, in the real-time database. So all that drawbacks is now gone and in the Firestore you will be able to make queries. But this is not all about it. Uh, Firebase and Firestores have a complete set of lists on which you can compare all of them. If you will compare the Firestore, Firebase real-time database as well as Firestore database as a point of view of data model, both are really simple, both are storing the things as a big JSON file, but the things actually get complex in the real-time database when things are getting complex or hierarchical. Uh, in that situation, the Firestore is having an advantage because you have ability to query the things and things become simpler in there. Uh, for a small-scale project, both are completely okay. One major thing that is going to impress you a lot is let's compare it again with the real-time database. In the real-time database, there was a somewhat kind of an offline support for Android as well as iOS. But in the Firestore, you get a complete support of offline access and offline management data capabilities for Android, iOS, as well as for web. That means you can design your progressive web apps quite easily using the Firestore. One more thing that I liked so much about the Firestore is in the Firebase real-time database, 
you have to perform all of your write operation in just single query or just kind of a single thread is kind of a situation but in the firestore you can actually make them as a batch process so that you can collect all of your datas which you need to write in the database and can just process them as a batch operation this itself is a long life saver also in the firebase real time database uh, whenever you are doing any transaction you need to write a callback function if you remember that but in the Firestore, you don't need to write a callback. It will automatically be repeated until the transaction is complete. One major big thing here. Now, scalability was a little bit issue, not much, I would say that. But if you are a big organization, obviously, one thing that has stopped you of using the Firebase in the past was its ab ability to scale the data. Like obviously, the 100,000 concurrent connections and a huge speed to write the data is really good in the firebase database but when your data actually grows humongously grown just like anything there uh, your database is not that much scalable you have to shred your data across multiple databases so that you can do a scalability thing but in the fire fire store they are promising that this is not going to be a situation no matter how big your database is going to be it will be completely scalable in the fire store now trust me that's a big promise I would be really looking forward for that beta if it is able to handle that. If that is the case, this is going to be an ultimate solution for a lot of big scale industries. Now comes up the ultimate question, should you be using the Firestore or the Firebase real-time database? Now as of now, October 2017, remember the date because you'll be watching this video in the future as well, October 2017. As of now, I would recommend to go with the Firebase real-time database because the Firestore is still in early beta stage and I'm not a big fan of using uh, the beta things in a production. It might break a little bit here and there and there might be some time in fixing that up and making that up and running again. So I would recommend to go ahead and stick to the Firebase real-time database as of now, again, October 2017, but I can see some kind of a big future for this Firestore database. And obviously I will be keep posting you updating about such kind of database as it evolves in the future. And obviously we'll be seeing a couple of videos of up and running with the Firestore, making a simple chat apps using Firestore and all kind of a basic stuff. Uh, on this channel. Now, I really don't want to touch on this subject, but yes, pricing is an issue for real-time database as well as Firestore as well. For the beginners user who are having not much of the clients or connections, obviously can use the free, free tier of both the versions, but there is a significant pricing point uh, there for the real-time database as well as on the Firestore. In the real-time database, you are being charged uh, for the bandwidth as well as how many, uh, how much data you are going to store in that. So there is no such thing as write and uh, read operations that you are performing. But since the Firestore is a NoSQL database, they are charging based on your write and read operations that you are performing on the databases. Of course, most of the other competitors of the Firestore are also uh, doing same kind of pricing things so there is not much to differ and again i would not like to go into the pricing issues because it's kind of a budget thing for different companies they can afford it or not so that's a completely different scenario and i would not like to touch much on that now just on to a side note uh, i have seen that the team is really hard working on the firebase firestore side i've been working with them there has been a lot of discussion about this product and all of the community is really supportive so i would say that at least go ahead and try this out you will surely love this product and this is just a personal opinion let me know what are your opinion about the firestore a recent release and also i would be mentioning the official blog in the description section below and as well as on the screen as well so make sure you read out and check out the blog and at least check out the documentation. It's always a good idea to be updated what's recently has launched on the internet and the technology world. And I'll be keep posting more such videos to get you updated about the recent releases of such technologies. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if in case you are not yet subscriber of this channel, make sure you do hit a subscribe button because it's all about tech and programming on this channel. I'll surely catch you up in the next video.